The Azure SDK for Python is a collection of libraries that enables you to quickly, easily, and consistently integrate Azure services into your cloud solutions. You authenticate your users and applications with the Azure Identity Library. You store your application data with the Azure Storage Libraries. You integrate artificial intelligence into your apps with the Cognitive Service Libraries. You implement robust messaging systems with the Azure Messaging Libraries. We have libraries to meet all your cloud solution needs, and they can be found at azure.com SDK. As you use the new Azure SDK for Python libraries, you'll notice that they feel just like any other Python library. We put a lot of effort into ensuring that we follow Python design guidelines, conventions, and best practices. We also integrate with the Python ecosystem and allow you to consume packages from either PyPI or Conda. Today, we're going to discuss a common healthcare industry scenario. We have thousands of scanned invoices and health records that we want to extract the text from, convert to JSON, and store in persistent storage, such as the Azure Blob Storage Service. In this example, we'll use our new identity, storage, messaging, and cognitive service libraries. We'll divide the application into two parts, the PDF ingester and the PDF processor. That way, we'll be able to decouple those two responsibilities and scale them independently. The Azure Messaging Service is the glue that will bind those application components together. First, we'll write a program that uploads the PDF files to blob storage to be later processed. While uploading the documents, we'll send custom telemetry events to Event Hubs, which is a service that is commonly used in massive scale telemetry systems. A new blob created event will be triggered when a new PDF is uploaded. We'll configure blob storage to forward those events to EventGrid which is an Azure native eventing system where you can listen for Azure events or define your own events. Event Grid will send a message to Service Bus using the official cloud native computing foundation cloud events schema. Our PDF processor will receive the Service Bus message and then call the new cognitive service APIs to extract invoice and patient information from the PDF files. It will transform the data into the format needed by later steps in the application, serialize it to JSON and save it to blob storage. Let's have a quick look at the type of documents we'll be processing. This is an example of an invoice that can be processed by the new Cognitive Services Invoices API. As you will see in a bit, the API is capable of extracting all this data into an object model, including the details of each invoice line item. On the left, you can see the original PDF invoice, and on the right, you can see the resulting JSON model that will be stored in Azure Blob Storage. The other type of PDF document that will process is a scanned medical record. The Cognitive Services Health APIs can extract all the medical conditions that are described in the doctor's notes. On the left, you can see the original doctor's notes in PDF form. And on the right, you can see the extracted data in JSON format needed for our application. Let's have a look at our PDF ingestion code, which reads our PDF files from disk, uploads them to blob storage, and writes events to Event Hub. For this part of our solution, we'll use Azure SDK packages from Conda. Let's open up Conda and install the Microsoft Source and Azure packages. I've opened the Anaconda Navigator and have selected the Conda environment that I previously created. In order to add the Azure packages, I first need to add the Microsoft source. So click on Channels, then click Add, enter Microsoft, and hit Enter. Then click Update Channels. Now select Not Installed and search for Azure Dash. We need to install the Azure Storage and Azure Event Packages. So select both of those and click Apply. It will then show you dependent packages that will be installed. Click Apply. Once that completes, select Installed to verify that all the correct packages were installed. You'll notice that Azure Identity and Azure Core were automatically pulled in as dependent packages. Now that our Conda environment is set up, let's switch over to VS Code and run the app. I'm now in VS Code and the app is loaded. You'll notice that I have squiggly lines under the Azure imports. That's because I have not selected the Python virtual environment yet. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to click down here in the toolbar and I'm going to select the PyCon virtual environment. We successfully created the Conda virtual environment, added the Azure packages, have loaded the virtual environment into VS Code. Now let's run the app. You'll notice here that we are using default Azure Credential, Blob Service Client, Event Hub Producer Client, and Event Data classes from the Azure libraries. Then we new up an Azure Identity Default Azure Credential object, which is a convenient wrapper around all the complex OAuth workflows. 
Azure Identity has many authentication methods available to you. When run locally, default Azure credential will use your dev credentials, such as credentials from Azure CLI or PowerShell. When deployed to production, it will use managed identity or service principal information you have configured via well-known environment variables. We then new up a blob service client, pass it the endpoint in the credential object we created earlier. The client will use that credential object to request a token from Azure Active Directory before performing actions that require authentication. We then get the container clients for both invoices and records and new up an Event Hub producer client. Event Hub sends messages in batches, so we'll create a batch. Then we will iterate through each of the invoice PDFs and the record PDFs and upload them to Azure Blob Storage. After the documents have been uploaded, we'll call the send batch method of the Event Hub client to send all of those events to the Event Hub. When the PDF is uploaded, Event Grid will automatically send a message to the service bus queue in the cloud events format. We actually don't need any code for this step. All you need to do is configure the Event Grid system topic to watch for blob created events and set the destination to the service bus queue. You can create this configuration via the portal, CLI, PowerShell, ARM, BICEP, or any other infrastructure as code method. Let's now dive into the PDF file processors. We have one processor for invoices and one for patient records. Both processors will look for service bus messages and use the Cognitive Services APIs to extract the text, convert to JSON, and then save to blob storage. For the processors, we're going to use a standard Python virtual environment and install our packages with pip and a requirements.txt file. We're back in VS Code and we have the invoice processor code open. We'll new up all the necessary Azure SDK clients, including the form recognizer client, which is the cognitive service that allows you to extract text from documents. We'll new up a service bus client to monitor messages sent from event grid to service bus. And by iterating over the service bus receiver, we'll automatically receive new messages. For each new message, we're going to deserialize it as a cloud event. And then we're going to pass the URL of the PDF stored in blob storage to the begin recognize invoices from URL function of form recognizer client. This is going to use the Azure SDK long polling operation design that allows you to make a method call and then it will automatically pull the results. Once we have the results, we're going to new up a custom invoice object. And then we're going to upload that and then we're going to complete the message. You can use Azure Storage Explorer to view the files that have been uploaded to blob storage. Here's the original PDF, and here's the JSON version of that PDF file. We can double click those to save them locally, and here are the files side by side. On the left, you have the original PDF file. On the right, you have the JSON representation of that file, which was extracted using the Cognitive Services Invoice APIs. Now let's take a look at the patient record processor. We're going to use the form recognizer client again to extract the text. Then we're going to use the text analytics client to extract the health data from that text. You'll notice that each of these clients are using the default Azure credential. You also have the option of passing a key to the client instead of a credential object. In this case, we're going to use Azure Key Vault to store that key and then pass it to the text analytics client. Once again, we are looping through all the messages sent to the queue deserializing into a cloud event, and then passing the PDF URL to the begin recognize content from URL method. We will pull for the results, and then we will deserialize those results into a custom record object. We'll then upload the result to blob storage. We'll then use the begin analyze healthcare entities method to extract the well-known healthcare terms from the patient notes. We'll create a patient object from those results, upload them to blob storage, and then complete the message. Back in Azure Storage Explorer, we can see those documents. Here's the original PDF, the raw notes from the record, and the patient data in the schema we need for our application. Once again, you can double click on these to open them up. On the left, you have the original PDF health record form. On the upper right, you have the raw notes extracted from the text. And on the lower right, you have all the terms that were extracted using the healthcare APIs. In this video, we gave you a brief introduction to the Azure SDK for Python. We learned how to use Azure Identity, Azure Storage, Azure Messaging, and Azure Cognitive Services to extract invoice and patient data from PDF files and store the resulting JSON in blob storage. 
You can find links to all the packages, docs, and code at azure.com slash SDK. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash Azure SDK to get notified of all the new SDK features and releases. Subscribe to our blog at aka.ms slash azsdk slash blog for a behind the scenes look at how the Azure SDKs are built. Thanks for watching and have a great day.